your man, Louis T. Welcome to this Louis T. Network exclusive, ranking the eight head coaching vacancies and the four GM openings. Now let's talk about these eight job openings. And here's what I assess. Here's what I look at, right? When I'm thinking about a job opening, um, if I'm a GM, I'm taking into consideration everything from the roster, the cap space, um, the draft capital, ownership, how stable is the franchise? These are all things that matter to me. As a head coach, cap space doesn't matter as much. Draft capital, eh, it depends on what the situation is. That, that may come into play. But really, do you have a quarterback? And what's the roster look like? And how do I fit into the equation, right? How stable is the ownership group? How stable is the owner? How stable is the, the franchise as, as a whole? Because I don't want to be Frank Wright taking a job, thinking it's a five-year deal, moving my family to that area only to be fired 11 games in. I don't want to do that, right? So clearly these are things that would matter to me as a head coach. So let's go through where each of these teams rank in my estimation, some of this is um, facts, like hard data, numbers, and then some of it is opinionated. It's my opinion, right? So some of it is subjective and some of it is factual. So uh, let's start with cap space. That's something that isn't subjective. This is factual. These are hard numbers, right? So um, cap space-wise, you want to be in a healthy spot if you're trying to att attract a GM. Um, it, 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 it can be a deterrent. It doesn't have to be, but it can be a deterrent when trying to lure a GM there. I want to be able to come in and have flexibility. I don't want to come in and have to dig myself out of a hole immediately. But again, if you're going to turn the roster over anyway, that's probably going to help you get yourself where you need to be from a, a cap situation. Um, it's not impossible. And again, if you're going to find someone that's willing to do it, but it still makes it a lot harder to attract the type of talent that you probably are looking for if you are going after a top-tier um, GM candidate. That said, third on this list are the New England Patriots. Um, they also are third in the league with $75 million worth of cap space. So um, they've got a lot of flexibility and a lot of uh, opportunities to make some moves this offseason. Patriots have seven total draft picks, the number three overall selection. So they're sitting in a really good spot. So now we get to what I think is the most important question. If you are a prospective GM or head coach, I think these are the, this is the category that if you're a co head coach, this is the one you're looking at the most. Because if you don't have this, then I better have resources to get this or I'm not going to be successful, right? And it's quarterback. Do you have a quarterback? Patriots don't have a quarterback. And then my last category that I took into consideration when making um, up my list of these openings and where they rank, organizational stability slash owner, right? So how stable is your organization and how is your owner perceived around league circles? Do you have good ownership, trustworthy ownership, um, patient ownership, et cetera, et cetera? Is the owner going to allow you to make the decisions, the moves that you want to make without meddling? These are the types of things you have to ask yourself if you're a potential GM or even a head coach. Because if you have a very meddlesome head coach or, or owner, he's going to not only meddle in the affairs of the general manager, but it's going to trickle down to you and personnel decisions and what you can and can't do on the field, who's playing, who's not playing, those types of things. You never want to be in that situation. So that's something that I would take into consideration uh, when I'm assessing these openings. So I, I rated these jobs in, in this particular category, um, owner or organizational stability slash owner. On a scale of one to five, five being the highest stability, you're as functional and stable as it gets in the NFL to one, which is as dysfunctional as it gets. And it, you would like to stay as far away from that job, if at all possible. 
Same can be said for the New England Patriots. They're a five as well. Obviously, uh, with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick, the evil empire, um, they were stacking up wins like bricks, six Super Bowl titles um, over a 20 year span or so. Um, those guys were outstanding. And uh, Robert Kraft, one of the uh, biggest owners in the NFL, one of the most influential owners in the NFL. Um, they do it the right way in New England. It may, they may cheat here and there. You know, they may try to get the upper hand, but uh, all in all, uh, the, the, the Patriots have been as stable an organization as it gets in the NFL. And so um, I'm actually in interested to see what they do. The smart thing to do is going to be what I ultimately talk about here in a second. But And that's what I think they're ultimately going to do, right? Because that's what smart organizations do. And they, they had the foresight to put themselves in this position. And I think they're going to go ahead and make sure that they, they uh, take advantage of the opportunity that they've set up for themselves, right? So now you get to the top three openings. And number three for me is the New England Patriots uh, opening um, at head coach. Um, they've got the third most cap space in the league at $75 million. So they're sitting pretty there. Um, you got seven total uh, draft picks, the number three overall pick. So that helps you with the next category. Do you have a quarterback? No, but you got the number three pick in the draft. So if you like any of the top three quarterbacks, Caleb Williams, Drake May, or Jaden Daniels, you'll get one of them. All you have to do is like one. All If you like all three, you're good. If you only like one, you could be screwed. If you only like two, you could be screwed. But if you like all three, you're fine. You're getting one, right? So you're in a great position there. Got cap space. Um, there's a culture already ingrained in this organization. And I think I already know what they're going to do. But um, nonetheless, and you got a stable organization. I think it's a solid, it's a really solid job. I don't love their roster. I'm not going to lie to you. I think, I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done there. But you got draft picks. You got cap space. If you need to you know, maneuver, you can make some more moves happen. You got co contracts coming off the books, things of that nature. Um, there's some talent there in New England. Don't forget, that's a really good defense. All right. Christian Barmore is a monster. OK, they turned him into a monster this year and he's living up to that first round pick uh, that they spent on him. Don't forget, Christian Gonzalez is coming back. All right. So Christian and Christian, those two dudes look like they could be the cornerstones of that defense. And they've got other pieces there that are really solid that, you know, Belichick was able to get the most out of, including Jabril Peppers, who's been playing really good football for them. So. I like that defense. I think they've got stuff there. I think they're off. And, and don't forget about Matthew Judon, who was pretty much hurt all season long. Damn good football player. Hell of a pass rusher. They got stuff in New England defensively. Offensively, eh. But that's why you bring in this new coach who gives you a bit of direction as to what he's looking for to fill up his cupboard. Because I don't love the receiver position. I think you got some really talented tight ends. And if you keep those two there, Gasecki and Hunter Henry, you got something there, right? Um, I love, I like your running back position. I think you just need an, an infusion of speed. But I, I like Ramondre Stevenson. Um, uh, there was another back there. They had Zeke this year. And I think Zeke filled that role beautifully. I don't know if he'll be back next year. But if it's a reasonable price, I'd bring Zeke back and just get you a speed back. And you, I think you can win with that backfield, right? And um, now you just need a quarterback. Now you need a quarterback. And you probably could do a couple things on the offensive line, but that that's not as bad of a job with all the cap space, with the draft capital, with the pieces that are already on the roster. If you have a vision for their offense, that's the key for me. You got a shot to turn that around very quickly, very quickly. Uh, I think it's the third best job available this offseason. Um, now I'm going to take the liberty – to take it a step further. And I'm going to give you who I think, this is not who I think is going to end up there. I'm telling you who I think is the best fit for these jobs, okay? Again, keep in mind, understand what I'm saying. I'm not telling you this is who I think the franchise is going to hire. This is who I think is the best hire for the job, okay? Um, so you get to number three and it's the Patriots and to me, this is a no-brainer. It's Gerard Mayo, right? He's already in the building. You 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 gave him a pay raise last year to stop him from leaving and taking interviews last year because you saw this coming. You had the foresight to see that the end of the Belichick, uh, Belichick 
era was coming to an end and you needed to be in a position to promote from within. He knows this roster already. He knows the strengths and the weaknesses. He knows how to maximize the guys that are there. He's young. He's energetic. Um, those players react and respond to him. They saw him as a star four years ago, which is why they've been kind of they, – they've been putting him in this position. It was almost like an internship, and he's been prepping for this moment. They've been preparing him to take over as the head coach of the New England Patriots. All right. And he said, as soon as the season was over, I'm ready to be a head coach. He put the pressure on the Patriots. There was a quote from January, like third or fourth, where he said, hey, I'm ready to be a head coach in the NFL. That He didn't say that out of nowhere. They didn't come out of thin air. That was a message that he used the media to convey to the Patriots. I'm not taking your little pay raise. I'm not taking your little pseudo position rank change or upgrade. I'm going to get me a job this year, bro. Either y'all give me the job or I'm going to find one. But I'm not, I'm not going to just stay here waiting. They said, we hear you loud and clear. They moved on from Bill. And I think uh, Gerard Mayo is going to be the next head coach of the New England Patriots. However, Mike Bravel would also make a lot of sense there. And for all the reasons I already named, the only difference is he doesn't have that veteran quarterback here. I like him in a situation where he's already got a veteran quarterback. Um, I, so this would be a little bit tough for him because he's going to have to find that quarterback. Right. But there's a lot of pieces workable there. Like I mentioned already with their defense, um, he can he could really get that defense to play well. And um, offensively, this is the type of shit he had in New England or, or Tennessee, excuse me, where it's really not no stars other than A.J. Brown and Derrick Henry. And you just got to figure the rest of the shit out. Um, that's what he would have to do in, in New England offensively. But he'd be able to do it because that's what he does. But to me, it's, it's Gerard Mayo's job. I, I just don't see anybody else getting that job.